Hey guys, um, so I'm gonna do a video about my entirely healed tongue piercing. Um, I have videos, uh, days one through five of the beginning, you know, like my healing process, first five days. I wanted to do that just because I feel like it's helpful when you're getting a piercing that affects something that's so, like, it's, what's, what's the description? Like, a piercing that, like, you know, it affects the way you eat and the way you talk and all that, and so, like, sometimes you need to know, like, what it's going to be like in case you have something that you need to do or somewhere that you need to go and you can't really be talking, like, you have, you know, marble mouth because your tongue is swollen. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, I have those videos. Those were still during the healing process. Now it is entirely healed, so I wanted to talk a little bit about that, um... I didn't have any problems with it healing, I didn't, there was no bumps or any of that, there was no, like, unusual anything, I mean, obviously there was swelling, cause tongue is gonna swell, but it, um, just went, you know, down after a week, a week, I wanna say it was a week, and then the, like, the swelling was, like, finally, like, entirely down, which was good. Um, let me think. What else? Changing it for the first time. Um, it wasn't that bad. I thought it was going to be kind of weird. I thought it was going to be hard, but it's really not all that hard to take out and then put back in. Um, I could do a video on how to change your tongue ring. If anybody is interested in that, just let me know. I'm not going to do it if nobody's going to watch it. Um, so, it was pretty easy. Like, you just kind of hold down one end of the bar, unscrew the top, take it out, put the other one in, screw the top back on. Like, I don't know, it was really simple, I think. Um, you know, as you can see, I don't have a lisp anymore, so the lisp does eventually go away, which is nice. Um, like everybody says, changing it to a smaller bar, much easier. Like, I at first I had the longer bar in, and I, I was planning on keeping it in, and I was like, you know, this isn't so bad, but, you know, whatever, da-da-da-da. And, um... Like, when I would eat, I would bite on the bar because it was longer, which was kind of a pain in the ass sometimes. So I decided I was going to change it to the smaller one, and now that it's, you know, like, that much shorter, I don't really bite on it as often. I do sometimes, but not as often. Eating, um, the same as before, like, if, you know, the first week or so is kind of difficult, you know, it takes that much longer to eat, but, um... Now it's pretty much back to normal. Like, I just eat like I would have without the tongue piercing, so not too bad. Everything pretty much goes, like, straight back to normal. It's just the first week that is really, like, a pain in the ass. Um, but for me, though, like, I don't know. Eating wasn't really all that difficult. But the best advice I can give you is just try to chew soft things in the, you know, with your molars all the way in the back. Because you don't really have to use your tongue as much. Um, things that I ate, I ate like macaroni and cheese. Um, I went to KFC with my best friend and got like potato wedges and their mac and cheese. And um, I ate like pastas and soup and um, lots of cheese. I know you're supposed to stay away from dairy. But I didn't have any problems. I didn't have any yeast growing and, you know, such. So if you want to have dairy, it is kind of your own risk because it is a possibility to grow yeast so I'm not gonna say don't do it and I'm not gonna say do it I'm gonna say do what you think is best for you I personally took the risk because I absolutely love dairy and it's just it happens like ironically dairy happens to be a lot easier to eat because most of it's soft and that's the one thing that you're really not supposed to eat technically with the tongue piercing so kinda doesn't really leave you much uh, leeway there for stuff, so I don't know, but I just took the risk, and was like, whatever. I didn't have any problems, no yeast, no infection, nothing. Um, cleaning it, I would, I used mouthwash, uh, twice a day, once in the morning, once at night, when I would brush my teeth, I would just brush very lightly around the piercing, and on top of the piercing, just on the top of my tongue, not on the bottom, just very gently, uh, just, you know, trying to keep it clean, and, was, you know, pretty much, it, there really wasn't any problems. It was, you know, I mean, obviously, like, the swelling was kind of pain in the ass for a little bit, but... <sighs> Excuse me. Um, like, one, you know, first week, that's it, and then you're good. 
yeah. So if anybody has any questions or anything, let me know, and I'll try to answer them. Um, if anybody wants me to do a video on how to change the tongue piercing, you know, comment and or message me or whatever, and then I'll do that video. I'm only going to do it if it's requested. Um, yeah. This is what it looks like now that it's all healed. Uh, tongue is back to normal. The hole looks fine. There are no like bumps around it. Or any of that. So it's entirely healed perfectly. So, um, yeah. So I guess that's really all I really have to say for right now. I can't think of anything else. Um, Alright, I hope this was helpful for if you're looking to get your tongue pierced. Um, definitely watch my f days 1 through 5 videos because those are more helpful, you know, for like when you first get it done. And it's it's more helpful to see it while it's actually healing than to hear about it afterwards, which is why I did those videos. So, yeah. Alright, I'm going to stop blabbing on now. And I hope you guys liked this. And, uh... Thanks for watching. Subscribe.